Hello and welcome to our series of recap videos on financial modeling. And in this video, we'll learn how to build the capex and depreciation schedule. In earlier videos, we've covered building the revenue schedule and operating cost schedule. We start the depreciation schedule with a header long-term assets because it's a line and a long-term asset. And control shift right arrow, Alt HJ to pick our format cell style for our headings. So as I explained earlier in the financials, net PPE is part of long-term assets. So my subheader is capex and depreciation. We learned in class that if you pick any line in a balance sheet to forecast, you take it through the base principle. Because balances in a balance sheet are cumulative, you start with the opening, you add whatever increases that asset. In this case, it is acquisition of new capex. This line goes down by depreciation. If there are no disposals and then we have the closing balance so this is the beginning addition subtraction and end that's the acronym we use to roll over to roll forward the balance sheet numbers so once you have this you highlight the closing row alt hbu to put in your double line and you go and fetch the closing actual numbers from your financials. So I bring in my equal to, and I go to my financials. I'm after net PPE in the balance sheet. So over here, on the long-term assets, I come to net PPE. So I pick for the first actual year, control, shift right arrow, control R. Of course, this is a link. I'm going to format it with a green format. So Alt HFC, then I make this a green format. The closing balance here becomes the opening balance in my first forecast here. So I link this up and I'm going to sum this with a capex and then depreciation. So with this highlighted, Control Shift, right arrow, Control R to take this. So this is our base layout. Now our goal is to fill in capex bot in the forecast year as well as depreciation to get our final closing balance. Again, don't forget to put in the right labels. This is in dollar million. Control enter. In forecasting capex and depreciation, these are movements. So we'll list these movements below the base. So capex and depreciation. For capex, we have already been giving capex in the assumptions. So in the first forecast here, you put in an equal sign. You come to the assumptions, go to the capex and depreciation assumptions, and we have a line for capex forecast. So you pick the first one. Again, there's a link, so Alt HFC, and then you make this green control shift right arrow control r so this is the numbers for the forecast here now we have to calculate depreciation so when we are done we back these two numbers into our base and then we get our closing balances so we start our workings we don't have depreciation yet and to calculate depreciation we need the useful life for both existing and then the capex that we'll be buying in the forecast here. So useful life, existing, and then capex. The units for this is in years, and that's for the capex is also in years. We have numbers for these in the assumptions. So I'll quickly highlight these two, put in an equal sign, go to the assumptions, and I have 10 for existing and 20 years for forecast. So control enter. 
is a link so alt hfc and then i'll make this a green now after putting in this i need to now also lay out the real balances for the existing and the capex so again existing and then capex this time round this is expressed in dollar million control enter so the existing for the first forecast here is the opening balance in my base so i put it an equal to and when i go i'm picking the opening balance in my base so this is 4371 i hit enter this is the existing ppe balance now i'll link my capex balance which is already pulled into the shadow and then control shift right arrow control r so these are the balances i'm going to use to work out my depreciation so let's start our depreciation so i'm going to start depreciation for colon first existing so i'm going to calculate the existing on this line and then below i'm going to calculate depreciation for all the years starting from our first forecast year so i'm going to now put in the year function and then go to our assumptions and then determine the first forecast year which is this one so i just want the year it's 2018 now 2018 when you add one year to this it will give us 19 20 21 22 Control D. So I have my five year forecast. I'll highlight this Alt H A L. So this is my label for calculating the depreciation. Whatever numbers I calculate will be in dollars. So I'll quickly paste them here. And at this point, I need to bring in the balances for the capex. So to make it easier, I'm going to use the function transpose. So transpose and I'm going to select this close and then press control enter. So I have a vertical orientation on these same numbers. So now I'm ready to calculate my depreciation. First the existing. So I come and stand in forecast year one. So forecast year one depreciation is simply equal to the existing balance F4 divided by the existing number of years f4 i'm going to take this number throughout the forecast period so i get this hold the number control shift right arrow control r so for the existing we get 43.71 throughout i think i did on the wrong row so yes it should be yes against the existing so that s for the existing and now we need to calculate for the new uh, forecast years. So what we are going to do is we are going to use a formula, the if formula. Basically, three rules are going to be applied. First, if the year I'm currently standing in, which is forecast year one, so I'll do year of this date. Now remember, we are going to copy this to the right and then downwards. So what you need to do is you need to lock either row or column appropriately. So here I'm going to do F4, F4 and then lock row 6. So if this year is less than this year, okay, again F4, 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 I'm locking only the column. It means that you are not charging the position for this particular year so if that is so then zero then you bring your second if if the year you are standing in you select it again f4 f4 at row level is equal to this time round this year again f4 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 on the b column okay then we'll take 
the capex we bought which is 150 f4 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 at column level and divide it by the number of years for the new capex so you divide this this you lock absolutely so f4 now there's a principle that for first year depreciation we use half year i mean it's not cast in stone but it's a convention to for most modelers that we depreciate the first year um halfway so we divide this by two so if it is equal to the same year then you take the amount divided by the capex yes and then we divide about two by two now if not then we are going to take the figure which is d81 f4 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 at column level and then divide it by the capex yes so you take this let me move forward move it to the right mm -hmm. you take this and then you lock this absolutely okay so that completes our formula so i will close till i get a black so going over if the year we are standing in is less we don't charge anything zero the year we are standing in is equal to the year on the left then we take the value divide by the number of years and divide by two otherwise we take the value and then divide by the number of years so here i will enter and i get this all you need to do is that you just take this control r and then you hold you come down up to 2022 and you do control d so this is the waterfall so in years that's um are after if you have years before you don't charge or on the day you don't charge but going forward it charges half for the first year of purchase and then full for the subsequent years so to make it colorful normally you can do alt h l h g and then you put in this conditional format we are not done yet so what you need to do is now sum the depreciation values for existing and capex for each year so when you come in here you need to put in a sum so sum the first depreciation year and then once you get this you take it to the right okay so now you have your full depreciation you're now going to back this into the base so our capex increases and then our depreciation reduces so minus this you take this and then you copy it to the right so this is the closing balance for your net pp and this is your depreciation so please practice and add it to your financial modeling tips thank you and have a good day